Hi, Charlie here, and taking part in another session, uh, in this case with another uh, friend and colleague. Her name is Ann Joseph. And so what am I wanting to show in these sessions is, I'm just thinking about it now, kind of asking myself that question. And my work is effective with people. I've been working with people for 35 years or so. So it's not like all of a sudden I found something that worked. But this, what I'm calling a protocol, because it's three or four or five techniques or practices nested one on top of the other, I find that I'm getting much clearer, stronger results with people pretty early on. And for instance, I've helped two people in the last couple of months stop smoking. And that's usually very tricky work. And I'm not claiming I can do it every time, but it's making more and more sense. People that have been like myself, actually, who've had a lot of trauma in their early life are claiming that they feel calmer and more at ease than they have in many years. And what you're gonna see during the sessions is not all of a sudden the person I'm working with makes this incredibly radical change and says, oh my God, my whole life is different because I wouldn't believe that if I saw it myself. But what you'll be able to notice is the people look a little different, uh, the affect, the way they're talking sounds a little different and, and I'm asking everyone that I'm working with in these sessions to please be absolutely honest because it's all good information. So I've said to people prior to the session starting, like if we're doing something and I ask, how are you feeling now? If for some reason you're feeling more nervous than when we started or whatever, please tell me that because that'll mean we need to readjust. So we're really trying to do these sessions as live and as honestly as possible. Okay, I wanted to say that. So we look for incremental changes and then you look at Anne's video and Joseph's video and there'll be more and more videos over time. And I think you'll start noticing the patterns that you pick up that are important of when people start to change. So, Anne, what is it that you'd like to work with today? So I have this tendency to put off doing things or avoid doing things that I don't enjoy doing. Um, I procrastinate uh, to the nth minute, so to say. Uh, and that's a habit, that's a behavior that I would like to change. Though I do get the things done, but it's, I keep pushing it. Yes, so when you look on the internet, for topics around coaching and stuff, one of the biggest topics out there is procrastination. You know, and one of the big challenges for people selling procrastination uh, coaching sessions or workshops is that people want to sign up, but they don't get around to it. And next thing you know, the date for the workshop is passed. You know, and they yeah. say, and they say maybe the next time. Hmm. And, and then there's a quote, I'm not sure it was something part of the Peter principle or something meant to be a little funny. And it's something like, whatever task it is I have to accomplish, there's always a bit less time than I actually need. Hmm. And so I think procrastination is pretty common. I certainly procrastinate quite often. And, and, you know, I'm surprised because maybe because of my martial arts background, people say to me sometimes when I'm working in groups, oh, Charlie's always good at stating his opinion in a good way. Let him say something next or something. And I often say to people, believe me, I'm often not comfortable in those situations. Mm -hmm. 
I do, I state my own opinion, but I would prefer not to because it's not pleasing to me starting out. So, so let's, let's try to make a little more sense out of what it is you said to me so far, and I'll ask a question or two. Did you say when I have to do things that I don't really want to do? Is something like that? Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. So things which I don't quite enjoy as much. Okay. So give me an example or two. Um, like for example, um, maybe maybe exercising. That's something which I would not enjoy myself doing. So I'd kind of push it till I really need to. And then I would, you know, okay, I get up and do it. Or even, uh, for example, if it is a, it's, if it's something which I need to do in terms of cooking or anything else, you know, a, I love baking, but I, I, and I, and I just go and do it. I don't procrastinate baking, but if it is a daily cooking, which I don't quite enjoy, uh, I would kind of push it to the nth minute till I know that, uh, you know, people around me may get hungry if I don't get into the kitchen and do something. So that's when I get in and do something. Or, and it spills out even into my work life. Um, in, in developing content for training is something which I, is part and parcel of my work, but I don't quite enjoy sitting down and actually doing it, whereas I love the training part of it. So that development of the content is something which I would keep pushing it till the nth minute and then do it and then go ahead and start training. So that's a pattern that I have seen in myself. Okay. So first of all, how are you about washing dishes? <laughs> uh, that's the routine stuff. I, 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 I do it very often. I mean, I, I just, I don't like seeing the piled up dishes. So you're pretty good at washing dishes. I don't enjoy it. But I, I, I don't like seeing the piled up dishes, so I just keep doing it. Okay, so you don't, procrast it. You don't procrastinate usually when no, it comes to No, I don't to procrastinate it. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, I don't procrastinate that. Okay, because one of the things that I've said to myself a number of times is like, if there's two of us living, me and another person living together in my, in my house or apartment. I mean, there's three or four dishes and, and, and two cooking pots or pans of some kind and maybe two glasses. And it takes maximum five minutes for me to clean that. But in my head, it's like a big task. Mm -hmm. as if there's 20 dishes and four cups and, you know. So it's very interesting for me, and I think people do this a lot, how we make a small thing big mm. and seem like more than it is. Mm. So, so with the dishes, still trying to see what, something starting out that can give you a little bit of help. With the dishes, you see them piling up. Yeah. And therefore, you don't procrastinate in general and you clean and you wash them fairly quickly. Because I don't like them, like to see them piling up in the kitchen. Okay. And what if you were able to take a moment and clearly see what will be problematic if you don't get down to the task that you need to accomplish. It make a difference. So for instance, let's say you mentioned something about doing trainings. Yeah. Let's say, let's just imagine you're gonna do this training in a week's time and you need to prepare some materials, but you don't so much enjoy preparing the materials, right? True. So imagine, just take a moment and imagine you walk into this training without the proper notes. Mm -hmm. 
is it going to be a is it going to be a disaster or not a disaster i wouldn't want that so what would you want being prepared being prepared what does it take to, what does it take to be prepared to do what i need to do and get the content ready to get the contents ready makes sense in time so that i can practice also and go through it before i get on to the flop yes so do you perhaps sometimes make the contents late enough to where you don't really get enough time to practice no i don't do that but i i i i know how much of time i need um maybe a, a day in advance so i kind of push it so if if i have two weeks and i could have done it in the first week i would rather do it in the second week okay so that's how i okay so i ask you to take a deep breath and if i have two weeks i don't do it to the second week because why please sorry i didn't get you you said if i have two weeks to finish something like making the contents i don't start working to the second week because cuz i know i have time and i know i can finish it before i need to before the deadline okay good so now to me trying to understand first what you're just saying now shifts the whole proposition a little bit uh mm huh -hmm. because like let's say you even knew a month ahead of time that you have to do a certain training that doesn't mean you have to start making the contacts the day after you learn that you have the training right hmm. so i'm sort of losing the concept of the problem here so what i find myself is i put myself in a bit of a stressful situation at that point in time because i i would be working all hours of the day at that point in time to finish it because i know i'm capable i've done it in the past okay good so but i do but i i put myself into a tight situation and i do it yes and it's interesting that when you mention that you have a big smile on your face as if you're enjoying putting yourself in a stressful situation it happens all the time so how does it serve you to put yourself in a stressful situation how does it serve you how does it benefit you i'm really focused okay really focused Okay. So let's just imagine something here. We're still in the I think gathering information stage or at least for me. So I sit and imagine that I have a training coming up. My preferred style of putting the contents together would be working 3 or 4 hours a day on the content or how much? Oh, when i actually do it i would prefer to do it 3 or 4 hours but i end up doing maybe 10 12 hours in a day sometimes because you have no choice by the time you get yeah. started yeah yeah okay. and i i and of late i realized that i don't quite enjoy that as much as i would i thought i did earlier okay you don't enjoy stressing yourself out as much as you used to enjoy it yeah that's kind of interesting so I say to myself for instance because I've also led many workshops in the course of my my career I say I'm doing like I used to do a lot of uh corporate workshops uh mm -hmm. and usually they were not brand new so it wasn't like I was taking a topic that I never had before but no matter what to keep on making the material current and sometimes to tailor it a bit to the client that I'm going to be working for 
and to reread it and get super comfortable with all of the material again. I know I should read through the finished manual five or six times at least. That's maybe three or four hours. I know, no, 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 no. And I figure 16 hours work. So the best way to make it enjoyable for me would be to start uh, a minimum of five days before I need to present the workshop. Take a deep breath along with me. If those numbers kind of make sense to you, what do you think about starting five days before? That sounds good. Okay. And what doesn't feel good up until now for you in regard to actually doing that? There's an inertia of sorts. Could be. So I, I know it here that I want to do it. You know it in your head, but you haven't, you don't really yet know it in your body, in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's please make a statement as well, just make the statement and then we'll tailor it. Uh, what's the statement of what you're wanting to accomplish with me today? I'd like to overcome the inertia of that I currently have in starting to do things which I don't quite enjoy, things that I put off doing. Okay. Good, and this is what happens with most of us. You're making the statement pointing towards the negative, right? The inertia, mm -hmm. putting off. How can you make the same statement pointing towards the positive? I'd like to enjoy doing things on time, well before time and uh, find myself enthusiastically doing it. Okay, great, great. Now let's make believe you've already accomplished that. Make the statement, I am. I am able to do things as and when required within the time frame and enjoy myself doing it. Sometimes maybe even before I need to get it done and I can enjoy the rest of the time I have left to do anything else and take up other work if I have. Good. Excellent overall and, and for what will suit you best, way too long. And not the I am able, that sounds a little like you're in the doctor's office or something. Just make a statement as if you're already finishing all of this work in the proper amount of time and stuff for a while now, you say to me, I am a person who finishes work on time. Okay. I'm, it's a little, sound a little bit too formal for me yet. So let me try what I would say to you if it was me. I'm, I'm finishing my work, not only on time, but ahead of time and feeling great about it. Now, those are my words. They might, of course, not be your words, but something sort of short and sweet. Go ahead. I'm finishing work on time and sometimes even way before time 
and I'm feeling good about it. Good, good. I'm finishing work on time and sometimes even way before time and feeling good about it. Yeah. And I like to, I like to redo that. I think I said sometimes, so I'd like to redo that. I'm finishing work on time and oftentimes way before time and feeling good about it. Good. And I'll tell you what I notice over here and you, there was much more life in what you said this very last time. Okay, so we're going to follow our protocol a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the protocol meaning the eye circles and some sounding and, and, and maybe we'll do the physical representation of how you're feeling. So I'm going to ask you to make your statement again. Make it again, please. So I see myself finishing work on time, oftentimes before time, and I feel good about it. Okay. I think that's good. And for the eye circles, I'm going to say, Let's see if we can we can shrink it down even a little further. It's got to feel right to you. Something like finishing my work in a timely manner and feeling great about it. Something vaguely like that. Sure. Sorry? Say something that will fit you, that are your words. Finishing work. Before time, feeling and, good about it. Yes. Okay. So that's that's the that's the feeling of those words. Is what I want you to please carry into doing your eye circles now for a couple of minutes, and as you're doing the eye circles, I'll do some talking, and please begin the eye circles. And I'm saying to, particularly for people a little uh, new to the work, is that Anne is making slowly circles. She can go either clockwise or counterclockwise. And in fact, she can switch at some point in time from clockwise to counterclockwise or back again. And what's really important is that and pays attention to the quality of the scrolling or the circle. So what I'll say happens for almost everyone is they go along like boom, 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 boom. And then it just seems to go like whoosh, and then boom, 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 boom. Whoosh. And we want to pay attention to have less of those whoosh places and more just boom, 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 boom in the eye circles, taking some deep breaths in. And the, the, the energy, these are going to be my words, but close to her words, the energy she's bringing with her while doing the eye scrolling is she's finishing her work in a timely manner and feeling great about it. And she might even have some capacity to see herself finished maybe a couple of days before the actual work is beginning and feeling a deep sense of satisfaction about that. Isn't it nice to do all the work and feel comfortable while doing all of the work makes the work itself that much more enjoyable. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you to stop and, and just look at me normally. So interesting because you look good, bad, or indifferent. You look to be in a different emotional state now than you were about five minutes ago. I'm wondering, do you think that's just my hallucination or are you feeling somehow different? I'm feeling 
feeling a warmth in my body. Okay, good. And uh, there's this tingling around my uh, legs. Okay. Okay. And so warmth in your body and tingling in your legs. And do you take that to be, I don't know, a good sign, a bad sign, a neutral sign, a what? I take it to be a good sign. I'm very okay. comfortable now. Okay, so it's a comfortable warmth and tingling. Yeah. Good. So, as you know, because you're, you're fairly uh, up to date on this work, is one of my suppositions is that when we put out a positively oriented statement and simply don't interfere with that statement by with other internal dialogue that interrupts, you know, that just being able to put out that statement, positively oriented statement, and just letting it sort of continue to go out into the world almost everyone feels better a couple of minutes later. So simply not having impeded ourselves in any way after having made this statement. Okay, good. Now, staying with a tingling and a warmth, and your statement might have changed a little bit already, which could be fine if it did. And anyway, there's no need to try to exactly say the same thing that you said before. So make your statement a positive intention now, please. I enjoy doing things well in time. Well before it's due date. I enjoy doing things well well in time. And what, what did you say afterwards? Well before it's due date. Yes. Okay. So the statement has changed a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I would say that your affect, the way you're sounding and the 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 the, the quality of your voice has changed. I'm not saying good, bad, or indifferent, just saying to me it's obvious that it's changed. Hmm. And you seem overall somewhat calmer with this issue. Hmm. What do you think about feeling calmer about this issue? I feel kind of settled. Kind of. It's, it's a possibility for me now. It's a possibility for you now. Good, good. So. Just, I'm going to say something, don't do it yet, and then I'll say go ahead, and then you actually do it. Huh? Mm -hmm. So, what I'm going to ask you to do in a moment is I'm going to ask you to make your statement again. And once again, it can change a little bit or not, that's okay. Make your statement again, and then do some sounding. And when I feel like you've done enough sounding, I'll just like raise my hand or something and you'll stop or I'll actually say something like that's good for now. And to explain to the people listening, you already know this, the sound is just meant to be basically circular in nature, like an oh. And like when I do the sound, I'll, I'll do one short sound for people that are new to the work. Towards the end, it usually winds up sounding like ohm, which is the kind of world famous uh, sound for making in certain kinds of meditation, but I'm not, all, I'm, all that's important is that it's basically a round sound so the air can come out fairly easily. Here's, I'll do a short uh, sounding myself. Oh. And as the person doing the sound, also as the person listening, I think you'll start to become aware of a vibration. And I think it's just, I enjoy feeling and hearing that violation, uh, vibration 
when I'm making that sound. So, so, and so now I'll ask you in a relaxed manner, make your statement again and then do some sounding. I enjoy doing things well in time. Oh. Oh, excellent. Keep continuing. As you're enjoying doing oh. things. Well. Enjoying doing things well in time. That's, that's good, I think, for now. Good. How are you feeling right now, Ann? My face feels, there's a kind of energetic feeling inside, feeling okay. of energy inside. And Overall, a lot calmer, comfortable. There's a lot of energy that I feel inside my body. Okay. Good. And you know, this is this is really important to note because usually, if someone if we were to talk in a more usual way and you would say, well, you know, and then after 10 minutes, I would say, how, how are you feeling? The average person says like worse than when we began or something like that. You know, I have this tingling feeling in the, on the soles of my feet now. Okay. 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 And you know, for some reason, <laughs> I, my nose is incredibly itchy today, so I don't think I do this with a lot, but boy, I'm just needing to do that. So I had to do it again, and I just thought people are going to be watching this thinking, boy, this guy scratches his nose an awful lot. But for some reason, I don't know, it's the fan blowing or something. My nose is very itchy. So uh, what it sounds and feels like to me and is that you're coming more into yourself into your whole being and when we do that as human beings we generally feel calmer more alive often we feel some heat or tingling in our body part of it just being the simple fact that we get out of just being up here going like this and we realize, oh my God, I've got the majority of my self is below my head. You know, as Judy Deloja likes to say, you need to be able to think and feel below your neck. And when you start to think and feel below your neck, your whole self begins to wake up. And when your whole self begins to wake up, you realize you have great capacity, great knowledge, great wisdom, and you're certainly competent, more than simply competent at doing the work that you're about.
to get down to doing. So how do you feel this? I, I think we're just going to do these two practices right now. Let's see. How do you feel right now about the likelihood of you more often doing work on time and well on time and, and actually enjoying just taking the whole process in a focused but more comfortable manner? Seven. Okay. On a scale of one to 10. Okay, and what do you think you started at the beginning of today? A four. Yeah, okay. So that's, that's a good change. And maybe, you know, if you'd like to, maybe we'll do another session or two together. So a couple of things I said starting off. Like if we had, if I was working with a client that wanted to lose weight and we did some of this same stuff and I said, how are you feeling now? And they said, oh, I'm 100% certain I'm just going to, you know, I'll actually fast for two weeks or something like that, so forth and so on. I wouldn't necessarily believe it anyway. And because what happens is when we leave the session and go back to our more normal life and we're just by ourselves, that's when things I think do the most rearranging. So you started this session out with a level of four out of 10 in confidence. And right now you're at seven out of 10, which is you know fairly close to double the amount of confidence that you started with. I'm going to take that to be a great shift for one session. And so you're sitting there, whether I have my eyes closed or open saying, I'm enjoying doing good work and getting it done well in advance. I'm enjoying doing good at work and getting it done well in advance or something like that. And actually giving yourself the opportunity to take, take that in, to let it get down into your body. You might even get a feeling of saying those words and they go all the way down to your feet. Maybe your toes are tingling. And, and there's one of like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this work well and I'm, I'm just so happy to be getting it done well in advance. Oh, really? Wow. Like that. Okay, so I thank you for today. Hopefully maybe we'll, we'll do one more session. Let's see what happens, what you and I can be in touch. And I think this is a nice start for today. And I hope for the people listening that they learn something. And of course, people can always go to, actually there's a Seishindo channel on YouTube. A lot of different uh, slides and presentations on stress management and such work that's related, some of it quite related to meditation or there's some chanting exercises and really quite a rich amount of information. And I think what I've been able to show you today with Anne is a good representation of how we can begin to think about our challenges differently we can actually come to have a good feeling prior to our situation completely changing itself because it's that good feeling that's going to lead us to make the necessary changes. Yes? Yeah. Okay. So thank you. And um, I'm going to end the session for now, and then you and I will hopefully talk sometime soon. Thank you.
Okay, thank you.